Hello, I'm Paco Muñoz. Let me explain dealer sockets in zero and Q. The goals of this presentation are to identify the main characteristics of dealer sockets, to use dealer sockets in appropriate scenarios, and to revise the advantages of asynchrony in regard to throughput. The contents of this presentation are structured in this way. Let's start. Zero and Q provides different types of sockets, and there are two advanced so types that define a joint pattern, dealer and router. Dealer is similar to the REC socket, but it's asynchronous, so it's also bidirectional. And router is also similar to REP, but asynchronous. And because of this, it should distinguish among the connected agents in order to forward the answers, since REP and router are mainly intended for servers. So, in a given interaction, a client may start sending a request through the REC socket. And later on, that request is received by a router socket in a broker that forwards the corresponding request using the dealer socket in order to interact with a server that uses a REP. Let's explain dealer sockets. It's a general purpose asynchronous socket. And it's used frequently as an asynchronous REC socket. That is, it is used in client processes. And using it, they may interact with servers. But in an asynchronous way. And this means that such client may also send other requests to other servers in the interim while it's waiting for a reply. So, it doesn't get blocked by failures of peers nor by the interaction with a server. But in order to interact with a server that uses a rep socket it must build a proper request message. And to this end, we need an empty segment, a delimiter, before the actual message segments. We can manually prepend the delimiter in front of the remaining segments. So, Let's see the following example of communication. As I already said, we should add a delimiter in order to interact with a rep socket. So, here, manually, we have inserted a first segment that consists of an empty string, that is, a delimiter. So, that message is received in the outgoing queue and will be forwarded to the corresponding rep socket at the server process. Rep sockets expect an initial delimiter or at least a delimiter contained in the body of the message. Well, here we have placed it at the first segment. So, on arrival, that rep socket drops the envelope. The envelope in this example consists of that single delimiter. Because of this, the application at the server side only receives the remaining segments in the message, that is, all that are placed after the delimiter. In this example, this single segment. But the envelope is more general. They are all segments up to the first empty segment, up to the first delimiter. In this other example, we have placed another segment in the first slot and as a second segment, 
we have placed the empty string. So here, all these segments, the first two, are the envelope of the message. When that message is received via RepSocket, the envelope are all the segments until and including the first empty string. So, here we have this envelope kept at the rep socket. And the remaining segments, in this example the third one, are delivered to the application. In this example, the server process. When the server replies to the client, all those segments placed at the envelope are prepended to the message that we are sending. In this case, the reply consists of a single segment, the string reply. And the envelope is reinserted before the actual contents of the message. And all these segments are propagated to the client that in this case is using a dealer and all they are delivered to the process at that client side. Let's see an example of program. Here we have repeated a previous example that consisted of two rep servers that interacted with a rec client. Here, instead of a REC client, we have implemented a dealer client. So, now, instead of sending simply the hello string with a second segment with a counter value, we should play with another segment that is a delimiter that is placed in the first slot. With this, we may interact with those servers. Now, we repeat, once per second, this sending message to all those servers. Remember that REC and dealer sockets use a circular strategy in order to send messages to multiply connected uh, processes. So, in this case, we are sending the messages to these two servers in a circular way, and will receive the corresponding replies. If any of these servers fails, the client may remain connected to the other and may continue sending messages to both processes, and it doesn't get blocked. Let's conclude. Once this presentation is ended, the student should be able to Identify the main characteristics of dealer sockets, use these sockets in appropriate scenarios, and revise the advantages of asynchrony in regard to throughput.